Ever wondered what happened to The Sopranos cast after the show ended? Some got into serious legal trouble, others vanished from acting, and a few skyrocketed to unexpected fame. And yes, tragically, some have passed away. Stick around for shocking cameos and personal secrets that you haven't heard before. This is part two of our series, so if you haven't subscribed yet, now's the time to do so and catch the final chapter. Lilo Brancato Jr., famous for his role as Matthew Bevilacqua in The Sopranos, had a life as tumultuous off-screen as on. Discovered at Jones Beach for his De Niro impersonation, Brancato got his break in a Bronx tale. However, his real life took a darker path. In 2005, Brancato was arrested twice for drug use, and in December that year, he was involved in a botched robbery where a police officer was fatally shot. Brancato was wounded, arrested, and later acquitted of second-degree murder, but convicted of attempted robbery, earning a 10-year sentence. In court, he apologized tearfully, but the officer's sister dismissed it as an Oscar-worthy performance. After his parole in 2013, Brancato struggled to revive his acting career. In 2018, he starred in the autobiographical documentary Wasted Talent. Now 48, Brancato lives in Yonkers, aids those battling addiction, and serves as the director of public relations at More Life Recovery Center. He's also penning a screenplay titled Never Meet Your Heroes, exploring themes of addiction and recovery, co-starring Terrell Hicks. Brancato is now determined to turn his troubled past into a force for good. Juliana Margulies is a renowned American actress best known for her TV drama roles. Born in Spring Valley, New York, Margulies is the youngest of three daughters. Her parents, Francesca and Paul, were Jewish with European roots and divorced when she was a year old. Initially considering law, she found her passion in acting. Her career includes roles in The Mists of Avalon, The Hot Zone, and The Morning Show, as well as films like Dinosaur, Ghost Ship, and The Upside. Notably, she played Juliana Skiffle, a realtor, in four episodes of The Sopranos in 2006, becoming romantically involved with Christopher Moltisanti. Personally, I also remember Juliana for her part in The Lost Room, where she played one of the leading roles. Margulies' breakthrough came with ER, where her character was kept alive due to positive audience feedback. After leaving ER, she explored theater in various projects before starring in The Good Wife. She published her memoir in 2021 and continues to be a significant figure in the entertainment industry. If you've ever wondered about the guy behind Agent Harris, well, you've come to the right place. Matt Servito first hit the screen as Trask Bodine on All My Children back in 1989. If soap operas had an MVP award, he'd have nabbed it with his nine-episode stint. But it was his role on The Sopranos that really got him noticed. From 1999 to 2007, he played Agent Dwight Harris, the FBI guy who goes from busting mobsters to sort of helping them out. His role may have started small, but by the sixth season, he was crucial to the story. Servito's career is like a TV marathon that just keeps getting better. He's played roles like Deputy Brock Lotus on Banshee and Satan himself in the Adult Swim series, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. He also had a notable role on Brotherhood as Representative Donatello. And let's not forget his movie appearances. He was in Hitch with Will Smith and voiced Sam in the 2002 video game Mafia. During the pandemic, Servito didn't just sit around binge-watching shows like the rest of us. He directed and starred in a horror western called A Town Called Purgatory. Damn, you're gonna win this thing. Born March 29, 1960, Annabella Sciorra hit the big time with True Love in 1989 and stayed busy in the 90s with Jungle Fever, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, Copland, and What Dreams May Come. But for us, she'll always be Gloria Trillo from The Sopranos. She also played Detective Carolyn Barrick on Law and & Order, Criminal Intent, and had roles on Glow and Truth Be Told. Her Emmy-nominated role in The Sopranos was a game changer. She appeared in Find Me Guilty and on shows like Queen Supreme, Mental, The L Word, ER, The Good Wife, and Blue Bloods. In 2018, she joined the Marvel Universe in Luke Cage and Daredevil and recently appeared in New Amsterdam, Godfather of Harlem, and Tulsa King. On the personal side, Ciora was married to actor Joe Petruzzi from 1989 to 1993. She dated Bobby Cannaval from 2004 to 2007. It won't be cinematic. Sopranos fans will recognize Paul Schultz as Father Phil, the priest with some interesting habits. On TV, he made a mark as Ryan Chappelle on 24 from 2001 to 2004 and as Father Phil on The Sopranos from 1999 to 2006. He's popped up in a ton of shows. Law & Order, Rizzoli and & Isles, CSI, The West Wing, Oz, Frasier, The Closer, and Suits, just to name a few. In 2017, he brought William Rollins to life in Netflix's The Punisher. 
On the big screen, Schultze has been in New Jersey Drive, Clockers, and David Fincher's Panic Room and Zodiac. He also played Michael Burnett in the 2008 Rambo film. If you watched Nurse Jackie, you'll remember him as Eddie Walzer, the pharmacist who knows all of Jackie's secrets. Starting out as a carpenter on film sets in the late 70s, Joseph Bataluco Jr. worked on Woody Allen classics like Annie Hall and Manhattan. Pretty cool, right? Bataluco expanded his skills into set dressing and then props, working on major films like The Godfather Part Three and The Good Shepherd. In the 90s, Bataluco made the leap into acting. He had minor roles in films like Godzilla and The Siege. But if you're a fan of The Sopranos, you'll know him best as Jimmy Altieri, one of The Sopranos' early rats, who failed to call for help on his radio mic. Bataluco also had a recurring role as Detective Jelly Grimaldi on Third Watch. His TV work didn't stop there. He appeared in shows like The Black Box and The Night Of. Beyond acting, his career as a set dresser and property master saw him contribute to a wide range of projects. From the blockbuster Godzilla to the gritty The Taking of Pelham 123, Bataluco's behind-the-scenes work helped shape the look and feel of many films. Punk-ass piece of Would you forget our captain? Let's chat about Jerry Adler, who brought Herman Hesch Rabkin to life on The Sopranos. Adler's career spans theater, film, and TV. You've seen him in Manhattan Murder Mystery and The Good Wife. Sopranos fans know him as Hesch, Tony Soprano's confidant. Adler's entertainment roots run deep with his dad managing the group theater and his great uncle, a Yiddish theater legend. Imagine growing up with that legacy. Beyond Hesch, he's been Mr. Wicker on Mad About You, Bob Saget's dad on Raising Dad, Toby Ziegler's father on The West Wing, and Fire Chief Feinberg on Rescue Me. In film, he shined in In Her Shoes, Prime, and A Most Violent Year. From 2017 to 2019, he played Moshe Pfefferman on Transparent and appeared on Broad City and Living With Yourself. Jerry Adler is 95 and still going strong. what I tell you? Hold on to your cock when you negotiate with these desert people. Robert Loggia grew up in the Little Italy neighborhood of Staten Island. He initially studied journalism but switched to acting and studied with the famous Stella Adler. Loggia started acting in the 50s and made a name for himself in Hollywood with roles in classics like Scarface. He even snagged an Oscar nomination for his role in Jagged Edge and won a Saturn for Big. But let's focus on why you're here. His role in The Sopranos. Playing Feech LaManna, Loggia brought a mix of old-school wise guy grit and charm. Feech was that guy who tried to reclaim his turf after being paroled, only to butt heads with Tony. And who can forget that intense scene where Soprano sends a boring 747 back to the can? Before Feech, Loggia had a prolific career with roles in films like An Officer and A Gentleman and Independence Day. He even made a name for himself on TV with shows like Emerald Point NAS, Mancuso FBI, and Queen Supreme. Loggia was known for his gravelly voice. On a personal note, Robert married twice and had three children. Tragically, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and passed away in 2015. Born on November 2, 1977 in Yonkers, New York, Jason Serbone started acting early. By age four, he was in a Sesame Street commercial. By seven, he was with the Ford Modeling Agency, appeared in Bon Jovi's Silent Night music video, and starred in Suzanne Vega's Luca. He attended Sacred Heart High School and earned a biology degree from Concordia College. Despite a potential science career, acting drew him back. We best know him as Jackie April Jr. on The Sopranos, a role that ended tragically but remains memorable. He also appeared on Law & Order, Cloverfield, and won Best Play at the Players Theater with Merging, later made into a film. Jason kept busy with roles in Blue Bloods, CSI New York, Third Watch, Shades of Blue, and The Taking of Pelham 123. On the personal side, Jason married Beth Serbone in 2004, and they have two children together. So, while he's often playing tough guys on screen, it looks like he's a family man at heart. Out of respect to my father. Meet Richard Maldone, who brought Ally Boy to life on The Sopranos. If you thought his on-screen character was intriguing, wait till you hear about Maldone's real-life escapades. Maldone's real-life rap sheet is quite the saga. We're talking assault, grand larceny, forgery, and possession of stolen property. And in a twist worthy of The Sopranos, Maldone was handed a hefty 15-year sentence for selling ketamine. But like any seasoned wise guy, he managed to dodge those charges, leaving us all wondering if he had a real-life conciliar advising him. Before he was Albert Burris, Maldone had some memorable roles. He started out as Joey Zasa's bodyguard in The Godfather 3 and appeared in Analyze That and Wannabes. Even though his last TV appearance was in 2006, Maldone didn't disappear into the shadows. In a move that surprised many, he auditioned for the role of Johnny Dio in Scorsese's The Irishman. 
At the moment, Richard keeps communicating with fans at various Sopranos festivals and also performs as a DJ at numerous fancy parties. Let's wish him luck in all his endeavors. Can you imagine that? You get a facelift and one week later you're in jail. Born in 1930, Tony Lip left quite a mark in the world of crime dramas. Most notably, he played the formidable boss Carmine Lupertazzi in The Sopranos. But Lip's mobster credentials don't stop there. He portrayed real-life mobsters Philip Giacconi and Donnie Brasco and Francesco Manzo in Goodfellas. Tony was born in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, but his family moved to the Bronx when he was just a baby. Growing up, he earned the nickname Lip because he could talk anyone into anything. Before the bright lights of Hollywood, Lip served in the U.S. Army, stationed in West Germany. Post-military, he worked at the Copacabana. It was there that he met Coppola, leading to a small role in The Godfather. His early 60s gig as the driver and bodyguard for classical pianist Don Shirley was brought to life in the film Green Book. Lip's personal life was centered in Paramus, New Jersey, where he lived with his wife, Dolores, until her passing in 1999. Lip himself passed away in 2013 at the age of 82. Though the cause of death wasn't disclosed, he had been in poor health for some years. Don doesn't wear shorts. Let's talk about Sophia Milos, the fierce Kimura boss Annalisa Zuka from The Sopranos. Born on September 27, 1969, in Switzerland, Sophia blends Italian and Greek heritage. She moved to Rome as a child and won a beauty pageant at 14, later becoming Junior Lady Italy. Fluent in seven languages, Sophia initially studied business in Switzerland before pursuing acting at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. She debuted in the independent film Inside Out and NBC's comedy Cafe American. Her standout role was Annalisa Zucca on The Sopranos a charismatic mob boss who challenged Tony Soprano, earning her international acclaim. She also starred as Yelena Salas on CSI Miami and appeared in Curb Your Enthusiasm, Mad About You, and ER. Recently, she featured in Project Blue Book and starred as Bianca Lagarda in The Border, earning a nomination at the Monte Carlo International Television Festival. Now she's in Gravesend and has roles in Chicago Justice and Criminal Minds Beyond Borders. I'm asking you nice. Or what? Let's talk about Michael Kelly, who Sopranos fans might remember as Agent Goddard. Born in 1969 in Philadelphia, he later grew up in Lawrenceville, Georgia. With Irish and Italian roots, Kelly has a rich cultural background, thanks to his parents, Maureen and Michael. He initially planned to study law at Coastal Carolina University, but had a change of heart after taking an acting class, leading him to graduate and performing arts in 1992. Michael Kelly's career is impressive. He's probably best known for his role as the fiercely loyal Doug Stamper in Netflix's House of Cards. But let's not forget his stint as CIA agent Mike November in Jack Ryan. Besides these, he's got a solid filmography with movies like Changeling, Dawn of the Dead, and Now You See Me. His TV resume doesn't stop there. He was in the miniseries Generation Kill and the series Criminal Minds Suspect Behavior. Plus, he took on the role of Dr. Edgar Dumbarton in Taboo. Michael lives in New York City with his wife, Karen, whom he married in 2005, and their two kids. When he's not acting, he's busy being a musician and keeping fit. Meet Tony Darrow, who played Larry Burris on The Sopranos. But his real story is just as captivating. Born Anthony Borghese, Darrow grew up in Brooklyn, where he crossed paths with notorious figures like John Gotti and Paul Vario. Vario, a Lucchese capo, was famously convicted after Henry Hill's testimony, as seen in Goodfellas. Before acting, Tony was a lounge singer in the Catskills. His nightclub connections, thanks to Vario, led to his acting break. He first appeared as a mobster in Street Trash, catching Scorsese's eye and landing a role in Goodfellas as Sonny, the bamboo lounge owner. He also starred in Kill the Irishman, Analyze This, and Mickey Blue Eyes. In 2011, Tony found himself in a real-life drama when he pleaded guilty to involving Gambino family members in resolving a debt. He was staring down a potential three-year prison stint, but ended up with six months of house arrest and two years of probation. He emerged from this ordeal claiming to have learned his lesson. But in the world of wise guys, we know it's never that simple. Darrow is currently starring in the TV series Gravesend alongside Chaz Palminteri and Sofia Milos. Have you heard about Michelle Santo Pietro? If you're a Sopranos fan, you'll know her as Jojo, the wife of mob soldier Mikey, who got too attached to his suit. But Michelle's talents don't stop there. She's appeared on Law & Order, SVU, Sex and the City, and CBS's New York News. In film, Michelle starred in Two Family House with Michael Rispoli and Kelly McDonald. You might also remember her from The Donner Party and American Violence. And her voice? It's been featured in countless commercials, video games, and promos. Did you know Michelle was a child prodigy? She scored high on IQ tests and won the Yale Peabody Museum Award. 
Born in Sicily and raised in Queens and Boston, Michelle was also a nationally ranked cross-country runner and a classically trained opera singer. Michelle's performed in over 100 plays on and off Broadway, and she's also done stand-up and improv in Boston and New York. Plus, she's an award-winning screenwriter with accolades from Beverly Hills and New York competitions. Go take a mitol. Let's chat about Joe Maruzzo, an actor you might recognize from his memorable role in The Sopranos. But there's more to Joe than just his acting career. Did you know he's also a skilled writer with works featured in the best American short plays? Joe Maruso's career spans over 35 years, encompassing film, TV, and theater. His talent for playwriting has earned him recognition. He even won the Best Short Screenplay Award at the 2018 Queens Film Festival for his adaptation of Bricklayer's Poet. And the best part? He's currently working on two full-length features. You might have spotted Joe in various TV shows like 21 Jump Street, NYPD Blue, Law & Order, Star Trek, Blue Bloods, and of course, The Sopranos. His versatility on screen is truly impressive. In The Sopranos, Joe Maruzzo portrayed Joe Peeps, a soldier in the Lupertazzi crime family. Although his stint on the show was brief, we know a few things for sure. Joey Peeps' surname was Pepperelli, he loved golf, and he had an eye problem. What's the matter, Joey? You got a eye problem? Now let's talk about Leslie Ray Bega, who you'll remember as the fiery Valentina La Paz. Born in 1967 in Los Angeles, Leslie boasts a diverse heritage with her father being Sephardi Jewish and her mother Russian Jewish. This cultural mix meant she grew up speaking English, Spanish, and French. Leslie's acting career began early, making her Broadway debut at just six years old. However, her big break came in the late 80s when she landed the role of Maria on Head of the Class. Then came The Sopranos, where she added spice to the series as Valentina, Tony Soprano's fiery mistress, who had an unusual tendency to prank her boyfriends. Beyond The Sopranos, Leslie showcased her versatility with roles such as Leah on CSI and appearances in films like Lost Highway and Mobsters. However, Leslie's talents extend beyond acting. She's also a gourmet chef, having served as a master chef in Santa Monica before launching her own dessert line. But that's not all. She's a real estate powerhouse in Beverly Hills, featuring on reality shows like Million Dollar Listing and Selling L.A. It was a joke, hon. There's nothing funny about it. Joseph Saravo was a talented American actor best recognized for his portrayal of Johnny the Saint Soprano, Tony's father, in The Sopranos. His career took off with a notable performance as Vinny Tagliolucci in Carlito's Way, where he played a vengeful character opposite Al Pacino's Carlito. In 1999, he landed the role in The Sopranos that cemented his status in the mob genre. Beyond The Sopranos, Saravo enjoyed a diverse and dynamic career. He performed over 2,000 times as Angelo DiCarlo in the national tour of Jersey Boys, and he took on the roles of John Gotti in The Wannabe and Gene Gotti in Witness to the Mob. His television credits included appearances in The Blacklist, Blue Bloods, and The People v. O.J. Simpson, where he portrayed Fred Goldman. Joseph's filmography extended to movies like Made in Manhattan and Enchanted, and he lent his voice to characters in The Wild. On television, he appeared as Cardinal Mancini in New Amsterdam and John A. Rizzo in The Report. Tragically, Saravo passed away in 2021 at the age of 66 due to cancer. If you're a Sopranos aficionado, then you're surely familiar with Louis Lombardi's role as Agent Skip Lapari. Lombardi, a Bronx native with a knack for tough guy roles, delivered a performance as Lapari that perfectly embodied the relentless no-nonsense federal agent tasked with keeping Tony Soprano and his crew in check. Before The Sopranos, Lombardi had already made a name for himself with a range of roles that highlighted his versatility. From his memorable turn as Edgar Stiles, the lovable computer whiz on 24, to a slew of appearances in films like The Usual Suspects and Natural Born Killers, Lombardi has shown he can handle both intense drama and quirky comedy with equal finesse. His ability to transition from the street-smart federal agent in The Sopranos to a tech-savvy analyst in 24 underscores his wide-ranging talent. But Lombardi's talents don't end with acting. He's also taken on writing and directing with notable projects like the indie film Doughboys, which he shot in his hometown of the Bronx. Yeah, who the f you, mother Let's dive into the life of Frank Pellegrino Sr., a name that resonates with fans of gangster dramas. Initially, Frank pursued a career as a nightclub and cruise ship singer, but in a twist of fate, his aunt pulled him into the family business in 1972. Frank started working at Rao's, the famous Southern Italian restaurant, and ended up staying for nearly 50 years. Known as Frankie No for his strict door policy, he made Rao's one of the most exclusive dining spots around. Frank's big break came in 1990 when Scorsese cast him as Johnny Dio in Goodfellas. From there, Frank appeared in various films like Woody Allen's Manhattan Murder Mystery and the Italian-American drama Tarantella. 
Fans of The Sopranos remember him best as FBI Chief Frank Cubitoso, a role he played from 1999 to 2007. Frank also featured in gangster films such as 18 Shades of Dust and Knock Around Guys. Frank also ventured into comedy with roles in Searching for Bobby D and Delivering the Goods. Sadly, Frank passed away from lung cancer in 2017 at the age of 72. Meet Armin Garo, a man who transformed from a rebellious kid in upstate New York to a respected actor. Armin's early school days were rough, leading his parents to enroll him in Albany Academy for some military discipline. It paid off. He graduated magna cum laude from Emerson College in 1977. In 1978, Armin became the New England heavyweight kickboxing champion and ranked among the top karate fighters by 1982. However, he switched gears and joined the East Providence Police Department in 1985, climbing the ranks and earning degrees in criminal justice but acting was always in his blood. He got his first taste in The Great Who Done It and later starred in Federal Hill. Sopranos fans know him best as Coco, but he's also appeared in The Departed, Dexter New Blood, Friends and Romans, The Wolf of Wall Street, American Hustle, and many more. Today, he's with Sita Azarian, a Broadway performer his parents would have adored. Armin's message to young people is clear. Pay attention to your parents and teachers, hone your skills, and pursue what you truly love. Yeah, you got a little cream on your mouth there, sweetie. Be happy to add to it. Let's chat about a music legend who's been around the block a few times, Frankie Valli. Growing up in a tight-knit Italian family, Valli was inspired to sing after seeing Frank Sinatra. Frankie's falsetto wasn't just a gimmick, it was pure magic. His career wasn't just about music, though. Valley dabbled in acting, popping up in Miami Vice, and of course, The Sopranos, as mobster Rusty Milio, famously known as the mayor of Munchkinland. In 2005, Jersey Boys, the musical about Valley and the Four Seasons, hit Broadway. It was a smash, winning Tony Awards and making Valley a household name all over again. The show even became a movie directed by Clint Eastwood, though Valley had mixed feelings about the casting. Valley's personal life had its ups and downs. He's been married four times and faced the tragic loss of two daughters. But through it all, he's kept singing. Even today, you might catch him on tour. By the way, Frankie Valli is only 90 years old. He's just a kid. Stand up guys like that. They're a dying breed. Hey, wise guys, this is part two of our series on what the Sopranos actors are doing now. Want more? Subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the notification bell. Meanwhile, check out our video on what really happened to Tony Soprano in the last episode or find out who's the best boss, capo, soldier, and associate in The Sopranos.